again this morning. But before we get started, I want to uh, uh, say thank you to our, uh, our sound man, also our media t- team, Brother Woolfolk. He keeps us going every morning and he gets us on live now. He, he comes in early just to get us up and started. I just want to say thank you, Brother Woolfolk. You don't see him behind the scenes, but he's back there getting us going, you know, so I want y'all to know it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's a lot of work back there. Yes, yes, it's a lot of work. And I just want to say thank you to him. And first I want to do another thing. I want to say just thank you for coming this morning, being a part of this lesson this morning. It's another good lesson, another teaching lesson for all of us that we can inspire us, encourage us, and also put us on notice on what God expects on each one of us. God's word is, is always looking for ways how 
uh, we can improve ourselves, how we can improve ourselves each and every day and make sure that we're following what God expects of us. So before we begin this morning, let's approach our Heavenly Father in prayer. And as I mentioned, this, this is a real good book. You could teach this things a thousand ways. Because when you talk about the book of Job, man, there's just so many points in there. But we're going to try to, to try to stay within the course of our lesson this morning and, and give it an hour worth of teaching and an hour get, uh, worth of listening and opening up our hearts to God so that we can receive what his word says. So let's approach him in prayer. Great Father, O oh Heavenly Father, we come to you, Father, with open hearts and minds, Father, so you can mold us so that we can reflect the thoughts that you think, Father. Father, we ask that you come into our hearts and mind, Father, that as we pour into your word, we, we see what, how you feel about matters, Father. You feel, you show us how you feel about your service, Father. You show, teach us today how you feel about obedience. And Father, what we're going to learn today, Father, is that you are a God who exact obedience and over sacrifice from your people. So, Father, as we go forth, Father, we ask for your blessing to be upon our people, all your people of faith and around the world, those who desire to please you and praise you, Father. So we ask for your direction over them and give them the guidance that they need, Father. And so as we go forth, we need your Holy Spirit, your guidance, Father, so that we teach according to your will. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning again. As I said, good morning again. We're going to talk about that man, that man by the name of Job. Good man, good man, but we're gonna learn some things tonight that, that I learned a lot. I learned a lot about this lesson this, this, the, uh, over the past week or so, and that it encouraged me to be careful what I teach. All right, man. Now, I want you to open up your Bibles with me, because today this is, a, this is a lesson that I want you to read along with me. I can't teach this if you don't follow along with me. So as I read it, I want you to make sure that what I'm saying came from God's Word the Bible. So we're going to start, the lesson starts in the middle, but I gotta, we got to touch on the very first chapter. So can we just open up our Bibles to Job, the very first chapter, Job 1. Job chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 1. Can we just do that, just, just, just together? I, this is not the lesson. But we got to start at the beginning so we can get an understanding of what, how God feels about what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to, go to, going to go to Job chapter 1 and verse 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright, and one who feared God and shunned evil. Stop right there. So we got one thing clear in God's word. He was a blameless, he was upright, and he feared God. And this is God talking how he felt about Job. All right, now, so we got that understanding of, of, the, of the type of condition, spiritual condition that Job was in when it come to God. Now, we're going to do something that we don't hardly ever do. We're going to go to the end of the story. Let's go to Job 42. The last, the last of the book, Job. All right. Just let, I'm going to give you a couple seconds to get there. Now, we're going to read Job 42. And we're going to read verse 7 through 9. Okay? Now. We did the beginning, so we saw that God said he was a blameless man. He was a upright man, okay? Now, during the course of his inflictions that Job was going through, Job had three individuals to come to him to speak to him, all right? And they said it came with uh, a theology. But what we're going to learn today, we're going to learn the difference in theology and bad theology. So you got to be able to teach God's word according to what God's word says. Let me explain something to you. Look at the Bible in Job 42, verse 7 through 9. The Bible says, And it came about that after the Lord had spoken these words of Job, that the Lord said to Eliphaz the Timonite, My wrath 
is kindled against you and against your two friends because you have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. Now, in other words, God got a problem with you lying on him. I didn't say it. That's what the text said. The Bible says that I want you to understand something. When Job was going through his persecution, God didn't deal after it was over with. He didn't deal with the devil. The devil went on his way. You know, the individuals who killed all of uh, uh, his kids, I mean, killed of the, his stock, the, came, the marauders, God didn't deal with them. The text says the only person that God dealt with was the people who had bad theology and lied on God. God got a problem with you twisting his word if he don't say what it say. I want you to understand, the Bible says God had a wrath against the, those three men who was lying on him. Now hold on now, the devil, he went down there and did all he did, but God didn't deal with him. The people who, 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 who took the sheep and the animals that Job had, he didn't deal with them. The marauders, he didn't do it. God said he dealt with people who lied on him. That's why we're going to learn today, bad theology will send you to hell. You got to be careful about what you teach about God's word because God, he listening, y'all. The Bible said he was listening. Now, what we're going to learn about, we just talked about the three Today's lesson is talking about Bildad. So we're going to break down what Bildad said that showed it was bad theology. And I'm, going to, I'm here to tell you now, what Bildad teaches, they teach today in the church. That's why you got to be careful about what you hear and what somebody says across the pulpit. If you don't study God's word, the Bible, you're going to be just like Bildad. You're going to be teaching and spreading bad theology. Look at y'all. Look at the text. Now, remember now, the Bible says God hated. I want to look up the word wrath because I want, you know what? Hold on now. I got my, I brought my concordance here. I want you to understand what wrath means. In the text, the Greek meaning for the wrath of God means he's angry and he's fiery. So that means God is really, truly upset. So in other words, God got a problem with your lying on him. Let's look at the, let's look at the lesson. We're going to look at the wrong view that Bildad had. And you watch this. You're telling me that this is not what we teach in, in, in God's house today. You ready for it? Here we go. Job, chapter 8 is our lesson today. And it's being taken by Bildad. Now, Bildad, Eliphaz, and also Zohar are, they all said the same thing. But Bildad, he said he is more stern. Bildad had an attitude with his. Look what Bill Dad said. We're going to take a look at Bill Dad at, at the very first verse, Job chapter 8. Then Bill Dad, the shoe out, answered and said, How long will you speak these things? He said, And the words of your mouth be like a strong wind. Does God subvert judgment or does the Almighty pervert justice? If your sons have sinned against him, he has cast them away for their transgression if you would earnestly seek God. All right, check this bad theology right here, 8, 1 through 4. In other words, what he was saying, that the righteous man never goes through severe trials. He said severe trials mean that God has rejected a person. That's why I had to name this thing, affliction does not mean rejection. Look at 8, 1 through 4. He said that the reason why he was, you was going through this is because you have rejected God. Now, we just read in chapter 1. God said he was righteous. He said he was upright and he was blameless. Now, get this. I want you to understand something. Elot Bildad said the reason why you're going through it because you're rejected by God. And that's a lie. You see, people today teach that if you're going through something, that means you did something bad. But that ain't what the Bible said. I want you to understand something. The devil, when he was in heaven, he, God said, have you got your eyesight on my people down, my man Job? The devil said, yeah, I sure do. He said, the only reason why he's blessing serving you is because you're blessing him. That's the bad theology. Because see, God going to bless you. Well, watch this now. God, it does, God don't have no uh, 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 
a situation where he got to look at whether he's going to bless you or not. God bless you daily. But see, what the devil was putting in his head, now, don't you understand why God did this? The devil was in the audience. He had an audience. He had an audience of angels up there because the Bible says he came in the morning meeting when they was coming together. So we got not only God listening, we got angels listening. So he says, well, God, the only reason why he's serving you is that you're blessing him every day. And that's a lie. That's a lie right there. Because God knows that there are individuals who he's he going to bless you, whether you, what, now he, those who are servants of God, he's going to bless you daily. You understand what I'm saying? But the, but the devil was trying to get them to see, well, the only reason why people bless you, Lord, or serve you is because you do good to him. Now, that's that bad theology. I want you to understand, the same thing that the devil said is the same words Bill Dad used. He couldn't, get, he couldn't get Job by killing off his children. He couldn't get Job by taking all his sheep and all his stuff. So the devil used, the only thing he could use, hopefully, is to use that bad theology. And that's how it's used in God's house. You got to be careful. People are led and astray by bad theology. That's why you got to be careful about what you hear and what you understand about God's word. He was saying that the only reason why you're going through what you're going through in verses 8, 1 through 4 is because you, you had done something in your past. But that wasn't the case. God told the devil, go ahead. Do everything you can to my servant, but just don't touch his, don't touch his soul. So God was showing him, look. I'm going to see my people don't just serve me just because of what they can get out of me. Whoa, watch this, y'all. You see, I want you to understand something. As God's people, we're going to go through some trials and tribulation. And we're about to step on something, you know, that's taught in the church. Y'all ready for it? There ain't no such thing as name it and claim it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You done stepped on some toes because you know why? If I can name it and claim it, I don't need Jesus. There are some things you're going to pray for that God ain't going to give you. Job was in a situation right there, and Job wished that thing could go away. But God allowed him to go through what he went through because it wasn't just about Job. It was about God and his name. See, sometimes when you go through stuff and you pray hard, God remove this. God, it ain't time for God to remove it. The Bible says the apostle Paul had an affliction of his soul. He's, whatever that affliction was, it don't go in details. It said he prayed to God three times to remove it. God told him, no, 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 I'm not going to remove it because my, my grace is sufficient. Paul died with that affliction. It was never removed. Paul died with that same affliction. But God still used him. We going through some trials, y'all. You, you, we going through some trials. Yes, we may not, we may want them to go away. It may be a wish that we go away. We may even pray for it to go away. But God may not want it to go away. That's why suffering, suffering does not mean that you're rejected by God. It just means you're going through a trial, y'all. That's what Job was going through. The Bible said he was blameless and upright. If anybody needed to be not going through a trial, it should have been Job. Because right. God had already seen his heart. But what Bill Dad was trying to get him to see is the reason why you're going through this is because you done done something wrong. Now, today, that is called, let me get my point here. That is taught today, and that's called retribution theology. That is actually a theology in where, in where individuals are saying that, hey, look, the reason why you're going through trouble at your house, the reason why you're sick is because something you done done. But God, is, as always, we have already learned in our lesson, God holds each one of us accountable for our own singings. But what Bill Dad was doing with this bad theology was trying to let him know, hey, look, apparently you done done something and you sit up here lying about it. But God told him you was upright. You was blameless. 
you, you, are, you, have, you have been following my law. You have been obedient to me. But the devil was trying to twist that thing. That's why, that's why Satan, Satan uses it because it works. Satan uses bad theology because it works. Because if I can get you to believe, if I can get you to believe that everything come out your mouth, you're going to get, oh yes, you're going to listen to me. But when I start telling you what God says, and that you may not get what God says, that's not, that's not a happy news for everybody. But we got to understand affliction does not mean rejection. It just means, because see, the devil had the attention. He looked down there and saw, well, man, this Job, man, the Bible says he came down to earth, he went to and fro, back and forth. So he was searching. He saw Job, he said, man, this man right here is being truly blessed. It was his desire to destroy the relationship with God. And the best way to do it, I want to send some folks over there to his house to lie to him and tell him you've been doing something wrong. It had to be doing something wrong. Go ahead, Brother Bruce. Exactly, exactly. And they were close friends of him too, Bruce. Exactly, exactly. They didn't know that it is, Bruce. There it is. And when you read this account, I'm going to tell you what's so good about this account. When you read this entire account, Job had a conversation with God. Not one time would these three men seek God's guidance on it. They came out with their own words, their own tradition. Had nothing to do with the word. Go ahead, Brother Bruce. Yeah, 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 exactly. See, one of them, uh, I think it was Zohar, he only spoke twice. The other spoke three times. So in other words, man, they was in a circle of lies. It was a circle. It was, and get this, in a point of your most desperate situation, in a time that you need encouragement, they're over there telling this, this man that what you're going through is your fault. Go, go ahead, mama, go right on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because, I mean, like, now they were supposed to be Joe's friend. Well, they knew. They should have known. If they was there, his friend had been around him and all, they know Joe didn't do that now. Exactly, mama. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But they was going by tradition instead of God's word. And they had good examples that the, that the, that the righteous get, uh, get hurt. All they had to do was go back and think about Abel. This is after the account of Genesis. All he had to do was go back and say, wow, Abel was killed, but he was a good man. So you, that bad theology they were doing, all they had to do was to come back and seek God. But instead, they used tradition in order to, in order, in order to, get, uh, to bring forth to, to Job. But Job, didn't, he didn't waver on it. Job went back on it. Job had Job, and you know what? They got angry with Job because they said, well, Job, quit pretending. You know good and well you're doing something. They had no business doing it. Just go ahead and say it, and then you will be blessed. But I want you to understand something. As I mentioned earlier, rejection, affliction does not mean rejection. It just means you're going through something for that moment. And, and that's why individuals who use a bad theology like this and misrepresent God's word, the Bible, gets God's attention. Gets God's attention. That's why studying God's word is, is, is your lifeline. It's your, cause just get this, what if them three men had a broken him down? Had a broken Job down and he didn't have that strong, strong confidence in God then this would have been a whole bit different story. So what I'm gathering from this story, from, 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 from me personal, is that you need to study God's word for yourself. Because he, he sent him in threes. Bildad, 
Eliphaz and Zohar, all in threes to try to tear him off, to let, let him open up his mouth and say, yes, I did something wrong. In other words, they were trying to force that man to lie. He know he haven't done anything wrong. Look at the next one. Look at verses five through seven. Here's an, here is another bad theology. Look at five through seven. Here we go. If, let's see where I stopped at. Does God subvert judgment or does the Almighty pervert justice? If your sons have sinned against him, he has cast them away for their transgression if you would earnestly seek God and make your supplication to the Almighty. If you were pure and upright, surely now he would awake for you and prosper your right dwelling place. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end would increase abundantly. All right, eight, five through seven. In other words, what he's saying, the severe trial, it means you need to repent from your sins. Just because you're going through some trials, as I mentioned earlier, does not mean you done sin. Just because sickness hit your body does not mean you done sin. Just because the trials or whatever trials you're going through in your life does not mean you have sin. We all are going to go, go through trials and tribulations. And see, that's where that bad teaching came in that they were trying to put forth is that no servant of God should go through something. That's why we got we to understand that when we hear uh, uh, the theology that uh, God's people should always be prosperous, yeah. that's not true. Right. That's not true. If God intended for every Christian to be rich, every Christian would be rich. And, and, and some of us going to die rich, some of us going to die middle, some of us going to die poor. But that does, go ahead, Sister Sue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's the, that's the key right there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's good. Well, that's good, Sister Sue. Go ahead. Mm hmm. Yes. Mm hmm. Exactly. Right, right, exactly. Exactly. He, exactly. And it's like I mentioned earlier, it's, a, it's several occasions in the Bible where people have poured their heart out to God. He heard your prayer, but it wasn't what in his plan. And it does not mean that God rejects you. He heard your prayer, but it, it doesn't work with his plan. And that's exactly what happened. You know, as we look in, the, in Abel, we look at Moses, we look at Abraham, everything they went through, if it was in their hand, they wouldn't have went through it. I promise you, Abel didn't want to be hit in the back of the head with a brick. If he had an option, he surely would have dunked that brick or whatever he hit it with and killed him. Moses would have never would have wanted to go through what he went through with all them hard head people if he had that choice. Do you think Abraham wanted to even go through the, the pressure of putting his son up there as sacrifice? I'm going to lose my only child? It didn't happen, but who wants to go through that? That's right. That's right. But we're going to go through it. Yeah, yeah, please, go ahead. I almost lost my train of thought. Do you think or believe that our God Mm-hmm. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Like she was saying, if we are God, we're prosperous and we are can be in good health. But us, the way we look at it may not be the way God looks at it. Because yeah. I feel like if somebody died and they were with the Lord, they got to do it. They ain't got to place people where they work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yeah, God's we thoughts is higher. Kind of carnal, I mean, in our own flesh and mind, where some things are very supernatural. Exactly. Don't. God has his thoughts is higher. I'm going to get you, Bruce. God's thoughts is higher than our thoughts. And his ways is much higher than our ways. And see, what we think is a, uh, what we may want to be look good, God says, no, it's, that's not for you. He knows that if he gives, if he gives certain people a amount of hundred millions of dollars, then he know that person can't deal with that. He know either what he gonna give him may put him away from God. See, some stuff, you know, we pray for, you know, it's good we didn't get it. <laughs> it's, it's good we didn't get it. 
It's some relationships we prayed for. I'm glad God didn't give it to us. Because what looked good on that outside, <laughs> what looked good on that outside may not have been good on that inside. We better have been glad God we didn't get it. But we prayed for it. But God said, no, my servant, that ain't for you. Go ahead, Brother Bruce, I don't want you to forget. Yes, sir, Bruce. And, and we work, and we work, yeah. Sure right. <laughs> that's that's sure. That's sure right, Bruce. She's sure right. And, and, and work, yeah, they got to and they got that's right, Bruce. Exactly. That's good, Bruce. Bruce said, you know, but money can't make you happy. Go ahead, sister. Good point. Mm-hmm. Ooh, that's good. Mm-hmm. She don't know what blessing is. She sees blessings from the world standpoint. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's real good. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Exactly. That's a good point. Good sister. Yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's good, sister. Yes, that's true. That's true. Good sister. That's real good, sister K. That's real good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Good sister. That's good. That's good. I like that. Good sister, yeah, that's good. That's real good. Mm hmm. That's good, sister. So bless this case. So put, she just rounded up for us. We blessed every day, y'all. Now, and that's a good point, sister. Kate. Just, you know, some people, the world looks at blessing. If you don't have a, a, your house ain't so big, if your car ain't so big, if your bank account ain't so big, you know, you're not blessed. But I'm here to tell you. If you got your lung, you can inhale and exhale. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you. Ha, ha. If you got your legs and you can walk, oh Lord, I'm telling you, you blessed. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. If you can't breathe, what does, well, uh, help me out. If you can't breathe, what in the world, if, if I give you a, a nice home and if I give you an exercising bike, if you can't exercise because your lungs won't let you exercise, what good is a, what is that good is that bike? I'm glad just for health, y'all. Health and strength, man. Just, sister, sister, please go ahead. I don't want you to forget your thought. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's it. That's so, what's you know, so that's what they bless the people in because the reality is that you're blessed. My little girl said one time she she's a nurse and she uh I guess they get some extra money and got in the bond and she started got an extra job and she started 
Wow. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It's pulling you away from. Good point, sister. That's good. That's good. It's not seeking God first. Go ahead, sister. Mama. That's good. That's good, sister. I like that. Yes, ma'am. Blessing. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. When you can't breathe, like you said, when you ain't can't get no air. Mm. I'm telling you something. And when you get a little bit of air, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And see, they, and they weren't looking at it like Mama Lou was looking at it because Job was really blessed. While he was going through what he went through, he was still was blessed because he still was alive. <laughs> see, he still got another, another day ahead of him. Even though he was going through all his affliction, he lost all his kids, he still was breathing. So he still was blessed. But in, in, in eyes, exactly, he still was blessed. Yeah, exactly. But in the eyes of Bildad, you done lost your children. You, you done lost all your stock. You done lost your wealth. Then are oh, you cursed then? But no, you really blessed. <laughs> like Sister K said, you really blessed. Because now, I want you to understand, all that he went through, he still remained faithful to God. And, and if, if when you read uh, two through four, he had a discussion with God. He started talking to God. God showed him, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, look, look who I am. In other words, what I'm telling you, Bildad them never converted with God. That's why, before you open your mouth and say, "Thus says the Lord," you better know what you're, you better know what you're talking about. <laughs> cause, cause, cause when you when you mention God. God stops right there. The Bible said he stopped and heard. Of everything that we've done, God responded on a lie. Didn't touch nobody else but these three men right here. And he said, I want, I'm going to read the latter part of that of 42, 7 through 9. He said, he said, I want you, this is what I want you to do. Now, therefore, take for yourself seven bulls, seven rams, Go to my servant Job, that's 42, 7 through 9, and offer up a burnt offering for yourself, and my servant Job will pray for you. Then I'm going to accept him so that I may not do with you according to what you've done, your folly. But in other words, he said, what I should have done with you for lying on me, I should have killed both of all three of you. <laughs> Man, God take that thing personal when you lie on him, boy. <laughs> in other words, he's listening. That's why I'm telling you, teaching God's word not only holds the people responsible, but the man that opened up his mouth is telling. That's why it's not no, it, I'm telling you, it ain't no simple thing when you open up your mouth and tell about God's word. It, it's, it's not to uh, showcase at a how smart you are. No, it show you how important God's word is right. that you sharing with him. My study, no, I'm getting you, sister, sister, hold on to that thought now. When, when my study of God's word, the Bible, is not just a read over thing, because I want to make sure what I say to y'all is what God's saying. And that when you have a question regarding where I got it from, I should be able to say, well, look, this is where I got it from right here. T I should be able to show you where I got it from. And then what I show you should, watch this now, it shouldn't conflict with the other scriptures. It should be all in order. From Genesis to Revelation. So God don't change. Go ahead, Sister Nadine. I don't, I don't. What you said in 42, when you said God told that my servant Job shall pray for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Got to pray for him. Exactly. The three men that lied on him, the three men had the bad theology. The Bible says, Job going to pray for you, then I'll accept you. See, God was, he was mad about that thing. Same God that's yesterday, that's today now. So be careful what you, I, I promise you, 
when I'm studying God's word, the Bible, I'm trying my best, I promise you, with God's help, is to make sure that what's said in here is actually what is understood so that you can understand God's word. Go ahead, mama. Mm-hmm. Then I don't think it should be you because I like to say, uh, put the devil on your feet, stomp the devil. You can't do nothing with no devil. No, man, you sure can't. You sure can't. You sure can't, mama. But, 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 but resist him. Exactly. Uh, the Bible says, mm -hmm. exactly. put him up under your feet, stop stomping. All you're going to do is put horns on your feet. I want you to understand something. That's why we're studying God's word, the Bible. Now, it's going to be said up here, but God's still going to hold y'all accountable. That's why you should be able to say, look, hold on, I read this right here. Okay, how does this apply right here to what you said today? And it should all come together. It should all come together. Because God said, I, I'm not changing yesterday. I'm not going to change. As, uh, it's going to be the same forevermore. So I should be, you should be able to share God's word and it should all come together. That's how, that's, what, that's how serious God's word is. That's how serious we should be about God's word. That's why he said, the Bible said, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sir. But if he's taken, he can get it back. That's exactly right. And so what I'm what I really getting to is be careful how you put your mouth on things you don't understand. See, oftentimes we judge things or we disagree with things that's not comfortable to us because we don't see it and understand it that way. But sometimes we need to stop and just say, you know what, God, I don't really understand why he or she is going through that. I don't understand why. Mm -hmm. He or she is saying that. But help me to understand it because I don't want to speak against your will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the, and that's the, the challenge with, with church is that anytime uh, something that we don't understand or something new is introduced to us, our first inclination is to find it and to judge it. But we need to be careful <laughs> that we are not fighting and judging God. Because then we can find ourselves in judgment from God. Mm -hmm. And thank God for grace. <laughs> because that's what God gave these three men. And that he said, I'm going to let y'all give a sacrifice. He said, then I'm going to cause the one who you said was cursed, who was really blessed, mm -hmm. to pray for you. <laughs> so that you can be delivered yeah. from your sinful thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They thought he sinned, but they sinned because so they good. judged him and they had no right and so we need to be careful. When we don't under, it's okay to say, I don't know. Why did that happen, Pastor? Sometimes I say, I don't know. Because I'm not God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And some things God will reveal later on. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it's better mm -hmm. for us to say, I don't know. Exactly. Or I don't fully understand that. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna we're gonna allow God's spirit, we're gonna allow his word to reveal that to us in due season. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So be careful how you judge and how you put your mouth on situations, not only the word of God, but on God's people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because some things you don't understand because God can be carrying you through something yes. for a purpose. Mm. That's right. That's true. That's so true. That's good, Pastor. And see, and we got to understand who, 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 who was Job? What kind of man was Job? He was upright, but what did he do for a living, y'all? What, what 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 kind of work did he do? I mean, what 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 was he? Was he a was he a priest? Was he a what was he? I make it easy. He was just a regular guy. My point I'm trying to get to you is that 
God consider him a man of God. Just cause you back here don't mean you just go, you're the only man of God in the house. God consider all of y'all man of God and women of God. And that God can use every one of y'all to fulfill his purpose. There is no bigger eyes, no bigger use in God's house. He can use all of you. And that's who Job, that's what he was trying to show about who Job was. Job, God didn't, uh, didn't emphasize his position in the world. God was more important about he was blameless and he was upright. I want you to understand. That's why as God's people, God blesses each one of us every day. Every day we have a blessing coming from us. For God. Go ahead, Sister Sue. Mm-hmm. Worry about your your Ooh, that's good. I like that word. Now, he ain't worried about your position. I'm worried about your condition. I like that, Sister Sue. I like that. Yes, it is. It's the condition of your heart. Yes, indeed. Yes, that's what's important. Go ahead, Sister Kay. Yes, ma'am. Hmm. Mm-hmm. God is really pleased to do that so you can help somebody else. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. If he tells you to do something, you do that. Don't worry about what somebody else is doing. You just do what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Good point. Yes, ma'am. And when, we, when, and when we get through all of this, we'll know that God is the one that brought us through all of this. Exactly. Exactly. You know, he, he was surprised by what you had to work with. You see? You, look, look how that thing turned out. <laughs> well, look how that thing turned out, though. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Look how that thing turned out. You didn't even expect it. You didn't even see it coming. So, I mean, trials has this way of, of, of showing you stuff. And like she said, preparing you for what's about to come. Let's go ahead, Mama Lou. Mm-hmm. All right. In the meantime, because God punishes us mm-hmm. Okay. I know what word, what you words you're looking for, does God allow? Yes, he does. That's what that's what that's that's the answer for trials and tribulation. God allows these things to happen. The Bible says when Satan asked God, he said, Go right ahead. Tempt my servant Job. God allowed him. He said, But you can't do what? You can't touch his soul. So God allows things to happen. It doesn't mean that God rejected you. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it says, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. I want you to put that tag that 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. So in other words, Brother Anderson, persecution coming your way. My wife, persecution right around the corner. Sister Nadine is knocking at your door. So, so don't worry about it. It's coming. Because the Bible says all those. So in other words, God allows it. Because persecution ref- it refines you. It, it shows you who you are. Go through a sickness and see what happened to you. 
See, see, won't you have a, a greater understanding and a blessing and appreciation for what God gives done for you? Go ahead, sister. I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. See, that's what I'm talking about, like that. You see how she said that? Can you tell me that scripture again? I should be able to go back to that scripture. If you're going to say it once, you should be able to say it again. <laughs> Second tip. And who else? I, sister, sister. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm glad you said that. Next point. Mm -hmm. That's what I was asking. Yeah. If, we, if we're going to reap what we sow, what mm -hmm. I'm asking, mm -hmm. if we're going to, I, I mean, like, uh, we know we're going to reap what we sow, mm -hmm. does sometimes the sickness that we have, is that, is that, is that, it's your soul? It, not you done sold it, is that, is that a punishment for something that you have done? Well, if, if your life course, if you live a life, that you're not cautious, uh, and you do things that you know is going to put sickness upon your body, then that's, that's you. Like Mama Lewis just mentioned, if you smoke for 30 years, what eventually going to happen? Something, you know, you see what I'm saying? Now that's something you brought upon yourself. And so the consequences of that is that. You, you understand what I'm saying? Some stuff, as Mama Lewis mentioned, bring, you bring upon yourself. That's, that's, that's called reaping what you sow. Now, I want to tell you something else that's not biblical. We, we as God people, we say it all the time. We call it karma. Karma ain't in the Bible, but reap what you sow is in the Bible. All right. Karma is a teaching from Hindu teaching. We Christians. We, we, we're Christians. So we teach you reap what you sow. You understand what I'm going? You see, go ahead, sister, sister. I see you. I see you. I go. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma you. You're right. That's good, sister. That's a good point. Good point. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> it come back something like they mentioned. That's what she's saying. Sometimes it come back worse than you put it out there. But it's coming back. It's coming back. <laughs> and see, that's the, but, but, but what Bill Dad was trying to say. You did something wrong. That's why you get it. No, that's not the case. That's not the case. All God's people, every one of us, we're going to go through something. There's going to be some type of persecution. And you see, the devil used all kind of uh, uh, machinations. Uh, you notice what he did. He, he killed his children. That didn't work. He took all his wealth. That didn't work. Then he attacked his body. That didn't work. So those are three things he'll use, y'all. Those are three things he'll use. One of the three things he'll use in order to bring God's people down. Did none of that work. So he said, try another one. I'm going to send these three men over here with this bad theology and tell them that the reason why you're where you are is because you're a sinner. And you just had it. That didn't work either. So God, the devil just keeps on. It just, let, it just lets you know how brutal he is. Go ahead, sister. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's when your that's when your trouble is going to start because now you really got the devil's attention. Amen. The Bible says he walked the earth to and fro. He found Job. Because he was blameless and upright. So now, after all this other stuff he's been walking around, he said, I need to watch this man over here. Because this man is li living an upright life. If you're living an upright life and you come to Jesus Christ, 
that's when your problems start. Exactly. 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 That's why we got to remember that scripture, as, 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 as Sister Nikki mentioned. Second Timothy three twelve. All who want to come, want to be saved through Jesus Christ, you're gonna go through persecution. And I don't know what form yours is gonna be, but it's coming. So it could be either. Go ahead, Sister Sue. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You sure right? You sure right? You go. Some things you go through. Some stuff you be like, oh, oh no. I know God was there. You can't tell me nothing. I know God was there. You say I know God was there. He because He brought me through this. And when you tell your example, your testimony to somebody else. You know the first thing they say is, man, I don't know how you went through that. You did what? You lost your, you lost your child, your only child. How'd you make it through that? Exactly, exactly. He's exactly right, exactly. And he told him, because see, if he had to kill Job, there, there, there would be no way for Job to show that he continued to have faith in God. So God said, no, no, you don't, t- don't touch his soul. Don't touch his soul, because like I mentioned earlier, it was not only just God watching this, all the heavenly host was watching too, because he came before them and brought this up right in the middle of the meeting. So now God said, okay, we'll go right on then. Just don't kill him. Let's keep on going, y'all, because we're about to... We about to Close this thing out here. Let's go ahead and finish up the latter part of this lesson. Verse, where we at here? Verse seven. Though thy beginning was small, yet thy latter and should greatly increase. So here Bildad is like, he's talking just like Eliphaz was. He was holding out before Job the hope of a prosperous future if he just did what was right. Sometimes you would do what's right and still things gonna go bad. <laughs> you, you could do what God says and still things gonna go bad. But what God, why God allows you to go through this? Why God allows you to go through sickness? Why God, God allows you to go through family problems? The reason why God allows you to go through this problem is, I want you to understand, it's not really all about you. It's all about God. And I promise you, once you come through on this on the other side, like Sister K said, you see, man, you see some things happening like you didn't expect to happen. But if you had to went through that trial, you would have never seen that. <laughs> you would have never seen the family come together. You see what I'm saying? You would have never had a better appreciation why you come to church. All right, man. A lot of, man, there's a lot of individuals who've been sick who has had COVID or had went through some tri- trials and tribulations, man. And then they realized, man, God, I said, you give me another one more chance, I'm going to show you, God, what I'm going to do for you. And, and, and Job has the same, Job has the same mentality that I, I appreciate Job so much. Because Job said, I'm going I'm to worship God no matter what. I don't care what you say. I don't care how y'all, how, how many, much the devil sent my way. I'm sticking with God. I'm going to stick, I'm going to stand firm on God. Serve God because you want to serve God. Don't do it for nobody else. Job, Job did serve God because he wanted to serve God. I don't care what them three men had to say. Job's eyes were set on God. So that's why we don't want to watch men. We want to keep our eyes on God. Because if I stop coming to church next month and don't never come back, don't let that shake your faith. You keep on coming. You keep on coming. Don't let nobody shake. I'm not, look, I'm trying to work hard to get to Christ Jesus. Don't let me, don't let nobody else hinder you from coming into Jesus Christ. And that's what they were doing. Those three men were trying to stop him from coming to Jesus. But he stayed, he remained faithful. Go ahead, mama. 
Oh, he's slain. Yes, we will trust him. So Job, so Job remained faithful. Exactly. 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 So what I'm telling you is, now, when you're going through persecution, it's not a happy time. You ain't going to throw no party and say, y'all, come over here and party with me. I'm going through some sickness here. No, you're going to hurt. You're going to be in pain. You're going to cry. You're going to cry out. You're going to suffer. But I want you to understand something, as I say it in my theme. Affliction does not mean rejection. Affliction just means, watch this now, while you're going through it, you got God's attention. He's there. He's there. And when you come through on the other side, man, you got a story to tell. <laughs> you got a story to tell. And, it's out, and you know what? I'm telling you something. Even though there's nothing new on the sun, when you hear those stories, the people that went through and came through on the other side, like I said before, how did you do it? How did you make it? How did you, how did you make it? Your plant shut down. You didn't have no job, and you were sitting there waiting on uh, your unemployment, but you still got fed. <laughs> you still had clothes on your back. You, you, still, you still had health, but you didn't have no insurance. God still took you through it. Then when you step back and look at all that in the past, you say, wow, all right. that wasn't nothing but God. All right, the whole time you didn't have insurance, you never got sick. <laughs> Woo! My, my, that had to have been God. That had to been God. But you don't see that while you, sometimes you don't see that while you're going through it. But when you sit back and make it through it on that other side, you know, you, you, you gonna say it yourself. Affliction don't mean rejection. It just means God is watching me while I'm going through my affliction. God is there all alone, y'all. But we as humans, sometimes we just don't understand what we're going through. Now, it just because you don't understand what you're going, on, going, on, going through does not mean that God does not understand and, and relate to what you're going through. And he's there, he's there all, all the whole time taking you through it. He's, he's walking with you through the whole thing. Even through that pain, even through them crying, God's still walking through there with y'all. And he's carrying you. He's carrying you so you can share that message that what you went through, how God was there. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, on that, that we got it that down on the 14th verse in the 14th, 13th, 14th chapter, the 13th, 14th verse. Mm -hmm. And it said, If a man dies, shall he live again? Where Job said, All of my appointed time. Yes, yes. I'll wait until my change. Exactly, exactly. He had the right attitude, mama. I done told you. <laughs> he had the right attitude. Now, at the end. We got to have the right attitude. Yes, it. That's it. That's it. Now, in closing, in closing, the Bible says that Job was blessed with double what he had before. Now, I don't know if you understand something. He lost all his children. God reju rejuvenated this man. He had more children. And the Bible said his daughters was prettiest daughters in the land. So he not only had his wealth brought back, all the children look good. He didn't have no ugly babies, y'all. You know what I'm saying? God blessed him bountifully. I want you to understand something. God blessed him with more than he had before. So I want you to understand, when you're going through something, it looks rough on this end. It really looks rough going through it. But I'm telling you something. When you come off on that other side, you go, you shining. Because you know why? Other people have watched what you done went through. Other people done seen the, the problems you done went through. And, you, and they saying it from themselves from the fall. They said, God was with that woman. God was with that man. Because ain't no way I could have done that. You sure right. Because if God ain't there with you, you sure can't do it all by yourself. God was there the whole time. 
I thank you, everybody, for your time and attention. I, and then I just want to close with this last one word again. I want to say it one more time at the closing. Affliction does not mean rejection. All right. Thank you again for our time and attention with our lesson. <laughs> Brother Bruce is going to take up our, our money for the Sunday school this morning. And we'll, turn it, we'll be back here at uh, 11 o'clock for a relevant word from <laughs> Pastor Ron this morning. Thank you again for tuning in with me.